Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 11th of February of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. Well, first of all I would like to start with Odessa region and the global things that goes around Ukraine according to this special military operation. First of all let's discuss Odessa. Uh, I don't know if you heard or not that yesterday in the evening, very late, at very late time, the Russians attacked the only railroad bridge that connects the uh, west-south part of Odessa, this one, with Odessa itself, and they attacked the railroad bridge, this one. And the most interesting is that the Russians attacked this bridge, this area, with a submarine drone, or marine, or some kind of ship drone, or something like this. Uh, I still, um, we still haven't seen any picture of damage that the Russians managed to deal to this bridge. But the thing is that the Russians, uh, for the first time since the beginning of the special operation, used their own sea drone. And uh, and there is another interesting thing about this bridge. If you remember, during the first phase or the second phase of special military operation at some certain time, some certain period of that operation, the Russians took a decision to attack this bridge with the rockets. And if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, the Russians attacked or used at least three or five uh, caliber rockets to attack this bridge. And this bridge were pretty, was pretty damaged by those rockets. Later, then the Russians tap attacking this bridge. I, I don't think, I don't know, I don't have any information about the status of that bridge, but anyway, you need to understand that this bridge were already attacked by the Russians in the past. It is very difficult to understand whether this, this bridge were uh, fixed and repaired by yesterday evening or not, I can't tell you. But anyway, the Russians attacked this bridge yesterday in the evening by drone, by uh, by sea drone or something like this. And the thing is that, first of all, the Russians were trying to achieve at least or to get at least two goals. The first one, if this bridge was okay, uh, was fixed or was repaired by the Ukrainians, then the Russians wanted just to uh, destroy this bridge and to destroy the railroad that connects Odessa with uh, Romania. Because the uh, Ukraine and the Western countries were using this uh, railroad to support and su supply Ukraine with with oil, with benzene, with gas, with uh, gasoline, and every, with fuel and with uh, armored vehicles and so on. So we understand that this bridge is very important. And just to reduce the Ukrainian logistic possibilities, it's a very nice solution. Uh, from the other side, you need to understand that attacking the bridge by the sea drone was also some kind of a show that the Russians wanted to present to Ukrainians and to the Western countries, saying that we have the same weapon. And from now on, you need to understand that all bridges along the Dnieper River are the real target that we can get and we can destroy it. And this is very interesting because the Russians, um, when while attacking, when attacking this bridge in the first phase of special operation, the Russians were attacking just the ground, just the top level, the just the, the road itself, the bridge itself. But when talking about yesterday, the Russians attacked the base of the bridge. So they damaged, they dealt much more damage by attacking the base of the bridge. And uh, now when attacking from the, from the river, the Russians are able to attack the base of every single bridge that crossed the Dnipro River. Another important thing about the Odessa region is that the Russians during the previous 24 hours attacked the Snake Island. Uh, they sent uh, a number of uh, Su-24 bombers bombers and they bombed this bridge with a number of bombs. I don't know the real target, I don't know the real losses of Ukrainian side on that bridge, but this is also very important. What does it mean? The Russians are planning to do something in Odessa region. Maybe they want to return the Snake Island and just to improve their positions in this area. I don't know. But another important update about the global scope of special military operation. If you know, uh, during the previous 24 hours, or maybe 48, uh, the Russians uh, 
gave another request uh, to the Ukrainians and to the Western countries to start negotiation process. It was it came from the Russian side. So the Russians, some kind of uh, authority in, uh, from Minister of, in, uh, of uh, Internal Affairs, he requested and he told told us, uh, he told them, the Western countries, that the Russians are ready to start negotiation process. Without any, uh, like I said, without any talks, without any rumors, without anything, just to start negotiation process according to the situation on the ground and that the Russians are ready to start doing anything just to stop and to prevent this war. What does it mean? First of all, you need to understand, every time the Russians are saying or say something about negotiation process or ceasefire process, that means that the Russians know exactly that nobody is going to follow this request, nobody is going to answer this request, and nobody is going to start any negotiation process. And this from what from one side and from the other side that means that the russians are ready to start their greatest offensive operation if you remember the last time the russians made on um, uh, such a request was on the christmas on the orthodox christmas in january if you remember the russians uh, gave us um, they they announced about ceasefire period from their side and they uh, gave the same possibility for the Ukrainians to start some kind of ceasefire period during three days of Christmas, but the Ukrainians refused. And if you remember, right after the end of the ceasefire period, the Russians started their greatest offensive operation, local offensive operation, the vicinity of Oglidar, and as a result of that attack, the defense line was, was penetrated by the Russians. So this thing about a drone, about sea drone, the thing about bombing of um, this uh, snake island, the thing about starting negotiation process or proposal of starting negotiation process are saying that the Russians are ready. They're ready to do something and they're ready to refactor, to, um, to change the front lines and to change the situation in the ground in their favor. Now let's talk about this real situation on the ground. First, we're going to start with the Kupensk front line. The Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians lost around 40 soldiers, two armored vehicles and uh, one artillery system in this area. And uh, as you can see, there are a lot of icons in this area. Today, the Russian sources provided a lot of video and photo confirmations that the Ukrainians uh, created some kind of convoys and they were trying to leave this bank of the river in the direction of Dvorechne. But the Russians spotted them and attacked them by the, river, by the artillery. And as a result of those attacks, a uh, number of Ukrainian soldiers and Ukrainian art armored vehicles were destroyed. Uh, when talking about Liman frontline, uh, the Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians lost around 120 soldiers, five armored vehicles, and three artillery systems. As you can see, uh, the clashes are very heavy in this area, and I believe that uh, maybe the losses from the Ukrainian side on this front line is, uh, are much higher, not much higher, but higher than the losses uh, on Bakhmut front line. Uh, we are not talking about, let's say, Kupinsk and Liman front line because there are no big towns, there are no strategic areas, just Liman and that's it, they're just fields. Because when talking about uh, Bakhmut, it's a very big town, it's a very nice picture to show, like ruined town or something like this, but when talking about fields, there is, not sh there is nothing even to show. So this is the reason why maybe Bakhmut is the focal point in this area. I don't know. But when talking about the real situation, Kupinsk and Liman front line is the heaviest front line. Furthermore, as you can see, the Russian source map has been updated. If you remember the previous version of this map, the Russians controlled just the red cloud and their, the front line were, were, mm, were around this line. Now the Russians updated and as you can see now they got, according to this update, as close as possible to towns like Terny and towns like Yampolovka and Tarskoya, this one. So I believe that maybe within the next few days we are going to see maybe a storm process or the end of this battle for Balka Zhoravka, so let's say about for Liman front line. Furthermore, the Russians continue their progress in, in storming process in the, in the area of this forest 
and so on. When talking about Cooper and Suleiman Frontline, there are no changes in this area. The only interesting update that uh, the Russian sources, maybe Ukrainian sources, published is that the bridge that connects Chasofyar, Konstantinovka, Ivanovska, Bakhmut, this one, this bridge goes, um, this bridge crossed the canal, was destroyed. And there was a video and photo confirmation. So that means that Ukrainians took a decision to step back. It was very difficult to understand when these bridge were destroyed these days or maybe a very long time ago. I believe that these bridge were destroyed just a few days ago or maybe today. And the Ukrainians, that means that Ukrainians understood that they are no longer able to control this area and not, uh, not to give the control of this bridge to the Russians. Hence, they decided to destroy this bridge. When talking about Ivanovska, that means that there are not much way how to supply and support this town. And when talking about the Western Sources map, you're going to see that there is just one way to support this town. Two ways, sorry. One way from Bakhmut and another way and this road N32 is already under fire control so this is not the best solution to support to supply the the small town Ivanovska the another possible solution how to support this town is from the town by the name of Canal this one so let's return back to the Russian sources map I'm talking about this cross about this area but when talking about this area I believe that this small cross is also under Russian artillery control, so this is also not a safe way to support this area. And furthermore, I believe that if the Russians have progress on the southeast part of Bakhmut in this area, that means that sooner or later the Ukrainians will be forced to step back from this town because they might be encircled and the on this only cross is not enough to evacuate forces from this area it's just not enough and uh, there is a river on the left and the right side so I believe that we can start counting days before Ivanovska falls when talking about the north part uh, the Russians are pushing this area and uh, their situation of Ukrainians in Krasnagara Paraskovivka is very difficult and I also expect from day to day or even from hour to another hour that the Russians will announce about establishing control over the north part of Bakhmut. Um, I think that within the next few days we are going to receive these updates. Furthermore, uh, more and more sources are saying that the Ukrainians do have a lot of problems with ammo, with artillery shells and so on. And uh, this situation we can see on the ground, this effect from this situation. When talking about entire Donetsk front line, the Russians reported that as a result of Previous 24 hours clashes, the Ukrainians lost around 140 soldiers, 8 armored vehicles, and 5 artillery systems. 2 M777 howitzers, uh, 1 Krap, 1 Getsin B, and 1 D30 howitzer. Furthermore, the Ukrainians lost around 1 uh, Raider INTPQ 50. When talking about the vicinity of uh, or the front line, Donetsk front line, the Ukrainians also lost three ammo depot in this area. Furthermore, when talking about the entire picture, the Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours, they managed to destroy around eight armored uh, ammo depots on the front lines. Of course, the main ammo depot were located in the vicinity of Bakhmut and another uh, area of concentration uh, were around Ugledar. When talking about Donetsk itself, uh, there are no changes. Uh, the Russians continue storming of Marinka. Uh, they have a little bit updated their map. To be more precise, they updated the gray zone in the, in the vicinity of Marinka, but without any progress on the ground. When talking about Uglidar, as you can see, there are still a lot of icons. The Russians continue their storming of this town. Uh, they published a lot of video of attacking inside the town. They destroyed some kind of very big buildings in this area and so on. The Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians lost around 95 soldiers, 8 armored vehicles, and 5 artillery systems in this area. M109, 3D20, and 1 Getsen B Hobitzer. Furthermore, 3 ammo depot were destroyed in the vicinity of Ugledar. Very interesting updates and very di uh, interesting um, differences between the Russian sources map and the Western sources map. When talking about the Western sources map, you're gonna see that they are showing that the Russians have progress on the west side from Uglidar in this area and they're moving in direction of Bagayavlinka. But when talking about the Russian sources map, they're showing that they have progress on the east in the residential area. Furthermore, as you can see, they have updated their map 
and according to this version the russians have they have developed their bridgehead a little bit to the east and they got control over the forest line that located on the east from this residential area when talking about the map of institute of study of war they show two progress from two sides from the west and from the east but they're saying that it's a, some kind of claims russian claims in this area uh the only I think that the Institute of Study of War are saying 100% that the Russians control the south part of residential area and a small fortification on the east from Uglidar itself. But when talking about orange cloud, it's just the claims because maybe the Russians haven't controlled and they need to provide the video or photo confirmation. Now let's move to Zaporozhye area and Kherson area. The Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours there were artillery duels and as you can see there are a lot of icons in the vicinity of Kherson. The Russians reported that they managed to spot and destroy one Stab B howitzer and another D-30 howitzer. From the Ukrainian side they published a video of destroying another air defense system in this area. The Russians used this bridgehead for one purpose to stop a HIMARS that the Ukrainians are sending in the area in the vicinity in the direction of Crimea. When talking about Zaporozhye, today the, some authorities, military authorities of uh, Zaporozhye area reported that the Ukrainians managed to collect a 20,000 army on the Zaporozhye front line. To tell the truth, when talking about possible greatest offensive operation from the Ukrainian side in direction of Militopol, 20,000 is not enough. Uh, 20,000 is not enough because I believe that when talking about the Russians, they have, I believe, maybe the same number of forces in this area, maybe even more. Uh, and to use 20,000 is not enough. If the, if the Ukrainians want to penetrate the Russians' defense orders in the Zaporozhye area, they need at least 50 or 60,000. The best number is 70,000. And maybe then they will be able, they are able to do something. But for now, 20,000 is not enough. 20,000 is enough to... Uh, to be in defense state and to try to stop the russians possible offensive operation maybe this is exactly what we're going to see the next so one more time one more time the russians bomb snake island i don't know why they're planning to do something the russians destroyed the bridge that connects the west part of uh, odessa with odessa region with odessa itself furthermore when talking about these small ground that means that uh, the russians destroyed this bridge and from now on there are no way there are no way on the ground that can there are no road or road that connects this part of odessa with the mainland the only road goes through moldova of course we understand that moldova is completely controlled by the western countries so i believe that there is no problem to cross the moldova area to supply and support odessa if the let's say the western countries send some ammo some armed vehicles or something like this furthermore the russians used their uh, marine for their uh, sea drone for the first time and now we understand that every single bridge that located on dnipro river is a real target for such a drones and i believe that soon we are going to see this and the most important thing is that the russians announced about possible or they requested uh, for some peace negotiations with uh, according to the station on the ground and everything are saying that i believe that within the next few days maybe the russians are going to start something very powerful and that's it for today military summary channel reminds to condemn any violence in ukraine thank you for watching subscribe to my channel put your likes and join my patreon have a good day bye bye